This is my nerd world, and welcome to it, a Depeche Mode podcast. This week on the show, tributes pour in in the wake of the passing of Fletcher, Fletch, Andrew Fletcher of Depeche Mode. Plus, we have your listener feedback this week. And welcome to it. I'm your host, John Justice, and thank you so much for checking out uh, the uh, podcast. I really do uh, appreciate it. I started this podcast for the same reason I started all of my other uh, podcasts, specifically my uh, my Star Wars podcast. And I started this podcast because of my love of Depeche Mode. Uh, I encourage you, if you are a newer listener to the show, to uh, go and check out my uh, my my back episodes, especially those uh, those first handful of episodes where I get into a lot of detail about my uh, my history uh, with Depeche Mode, uh, the reason why I love this band uh, so much, uh, mirrors uh, so many of you that listen. Uh, in in a lot of different ways, and I love hearing from you as well. And this week on the show, while we run through some of the tributes that have been pouring in in the wake of the passing of uh, Andrew uh, Andrew Fletcher, um, uh, we also have some uh, some listener feedback to share uh, as well. And I appreciate those who have uh, written in uh, to talkshownerd at gmail dot com. That's my email address, talkshownerd at gmail dot com. You can also uh, get there from uh, mynerdworld uh, dot net. So, uh, getting getting past uh, first, you know, still the the difficulty in the passing of Andrew Fletcher that we covered on uh, on last week's uh, last week's episode. Um, I do want to mention, and if somebody has heard different, um, please uh, email me and let me know. I just did another search online and haven't been able to find um, anything further. But my understanding of the reason why. Uh, we lost Andrew Fletcher uh, at such a young age of 60, um, is that it was some sort of a heart condition. Um, I have not gotten confirmation of this apart from uh, individuals who apparently know the band or had close knowledge of this. There is uh, some talk that uh, Fletch had actually gone into the um, into the hospital uh, recently, uh, over a potential heart condition, but that it was something relating to his heart. Um, the official statement, of course, from the band continues to be that it was it was unexpected uh, and natural uh, causes. So this, you know, strikes you know close to the heart for me. As I've talked about on the previous episode, I've had my own share of uh, of heart issues, having to have. Uh, two different open heart surgeries for uh, aortic valve replacement and an ascending aortic aneurysm. Uh, that was in 2009. I had uh, a subsequent uh, surgery to patch a hole in the graft that replaced the aneurysm in 2012. And now in less than two weeks, I have to go in for a third open heart surgery uh, because the graft is leaking again. And uh, the plan is to go and replace the uh, the graft completely, um, hopefully leaving the valve intact, but they may have to replace the valve as well. Um, I'm confident going into the surgery, uh, and I've been through all of the required tests so far. I actually had my last doctor's appointments before the surgery on the 15th, and uh, just looking real, really looking for I would go in right now if I could. I'm looking forward to uh, to getting this done. So uh, not about me on the show. I just kind of wanted to share, you know, the, the, the band is so personal, right, to all of us, to you listening. We all feel that connection. Uh, and I certainly um, have leaned into uh, the writing of Martin Gore and Dave Gaughan and the, 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 the band's music um, and, and used it for inspiration, used it for encouragement, used it for comfort. I actually put together a playlist of uh, Depeche Mode songs as of late that we're all relating to something heart related. I like to I like to theme things in my life, and Depeche Mode makes it very easy to go and do that because uh, they have uh, so uh, so many songs to choose from and such a rich catalog and um, rich diversity in in topics and the ambiguity that I've talked about so many times of the of the band as well. So. Um, 
it's great to see the tributes pouring in and the love of Andrew Fletcher and very little uh, negativity. Um, it's one of the things that I've also talked about on the show that I that I love about being a Depeche Mode fan, and I know that there are other bands that that get to experience this as well. But being a fan of Star Wars in in pop culture, uh, it's not that way. There are many divisions within the fandom and most fandoms of of pop culture items. Music tends to be um, a little bit removed from that. I think I think people are more forgiving. Of, of music when it comes to a band. It certainly doesn't seem to be the case for Marvel films or DC films or certainly Star Wars films. And it's one of the things that I appreciate so much about uh, the Depeche Mode fandom is the community and that regardless of what your background is, it really honestly does not seem to matter who you are. If you're a Depeche Mode fan, you're a Depeche Mode fan. And there is a just, there is a mutual respect um that fans have that I just so, so appreciate um, that it, again, it doesn't matter what your background is. It doesn't matter, you know, your life and choices. You're a Depeche Mode fan. I'm a Depeche Mode fan. We're Depeche Mode fans and we all love this band and accept each other. And that's one of the things that one of the many aspects of being a Depeche Mode fan that I love so much. Speaking of which, um, I do want to share with you a couple of tributes um, that uh, that have come in in the wake of the passing of Andrew Fletcher for this week's podcast. First one comes from not an article devoted exclusively to Andrew Fletcher, but um, a very relevant mention in this piece from The Enemy. Forget the singer and take a moment to appreciate your favorite band's secret weapons. The enemy writes, sometimes it's the quiet ones you have to watch. The ones lurking in the back, more silhouette than keyboardist, while the singer humps the monitors dressed as an s and Wyatt Earp. Or the smiley ones, looking like a surfer dude, just jumped in the van one day and they let him play drums because he had a reliable connection for some gnarly weed. Or the gentlemanly ones, you were, uh, were you to phone their hotel room in the middle of the night demanding where's my drummer, would get up, put on a full suit, come down to the hotel lobby to punch you in the face and shouting, I'm not your drummer, um, you're my singer. Sometimes losing, respectively, an Andy Fletcher from Depeche Mode, a Taylor Hawkins from Foo Fighters, or a Charlie Watts from the Stones serves to spotlight the brilliance of the rock and roll secret weapon, the unassuming character you might try to order a cocktail from at the after show, but it turns out to be the backbone or true talent of the operation. Fletch, who died last week at age 60, was a prime example, looking in most Depeche Mode photo shoots, like the venue manager who's wandered into the pop-up bondage club to ask if they could pierce all of the scrotums a little quieter, he was actually the only thing keeping the band together all those years. As the guy who took on the player-manager role and taking care of a lot of business affairs that were a bit too well not smack for everyone else to bother with, he was, as he had to say so himself, the tall guy in the background without whom this international corporation called Depeche Mode would ever work. And that's the extent of what the enemy uh, talked about with regard to, to to Fletch. And reading a lot of the posts on uh, the uh, Halo forum at Depeche-Mode.com, uh, really interesting to see the different views that that Andrew Fletcher had in the band from the fandom. I think most of us have probably watched a vast majority of the documentaries around the band. It's another thing that I've really loved about Depeche Mode. While they've kept so much ambiguity, and I use that word a lot, but it works. So much ambiguity behind and mystery behind the, the lyrical content of the songs. You know, if you know the band members and the and the backstory of the band members you can read into the lyrics what is being written about especially in the case of Dave Gone 
Um, but that being said, you know, Martin's always been reluctant to go and speak specifically about the meaning behind his songs. And I think it's to the band's credit that he's done that. We can often apply our own situations in life throughout life that take on different meaning throughout our lives to the songs that Martin Gore has has written. And it's one of the marvelous, masterful things about what Depeche Mode um, does. But they've also allowed us to get a glimpse into the creative process a lot throughout their career. And I've really appreciated all of the documentaries. And while Andrew Fletcher certainly has some musical talent, it's been clear that he has always been sort of a bit of a mediator, you know, the, the, the grout between the tiles, if you will, or the bricks of Depeche Mode. But at the same time, you go and watch the documentary for Sounds of the Universe um, and specifically the uh, portion of that documentary where they are working on Perfect and they're going through the different iterations of Perfect and they're getting in the studio and they're putting it up on the big speakers. And, you know, it's clear. And I remember that even then um, at the time, knowing Fletcher's role in the band, how much Fletcher was involved just in the discussion around the songs and his input was incredibly valuable. So... It goes beyond just the music. They all had a role to play in the music as well. While Martin and Dave, you know, over the course of the past few decades have been the ones that have been writing the songs, Martin more than Dave, but even in the early career, which is in their early part of their career, which is Martin writing uh, all of the songs uh, after the departure of, uh, of Vince Clark, it's clear that, you know, Andy Fletcher made his voice heard in the crafting of the sound of Depeche Mode. Uh, That is going to be missed even if he wasn't an integral part in the creation of the songs themselves from the composition standpoint or from the lyrical standpoint. Uh, I do believe that Depeche Mode will put out another record, and I'll talk a little bit more about that coming up in listener feedback because I received an email from somebody who believes that is the the, uh, believes the same thing that I do. I also think it's partly the reason why we haven't heard from the band yet. I think a part of that is because the band is figuring out what they're going to do, and I expect that we will probably get a a a larger encompassing announcement. Um, my guess is that. And I guess I'm getting ahead of myself talking about this, but I'll get into it now. My guess is that the band was planning a pending announcement about the next phase of Depeche Mode's career. And that that was put on hold in the wake of Andy Fletcher's passing. And the band will make an official announcement with regard to his passing from the band members themselves while also giving the fans the details of what the future of the band is going to be. So I'll get into a little bit more of that coming up. Next, I want to share with you just another tribute. Uh, And this one um, strikes, again, close to home because I grew up in the Los Angeles and Orange County region of Southern California and went to Dodger Stadium a lot, not only to see baseball games, but also to see Depeche Mode play Dodger Stadium. Um, Los Angeles Dodgers organist pays tribute to Depeche Mode's Andy Fletcher. Uh, the death of longtime Depeche Mode keyboardist Andrew Fletcher uh, last week at the age of 60 impacted many in the music community. And the tributes have since been plentiful. One of the more interesting ones to have surfaced over the past week comes from Los Angeles Dodgers keyboardist Dieter Ruhl, who spent a majority of the May 30th game against the Pittsburgh Pirates dropping multiple Depeche Mode selections for fans in attendance as a nod to the late musician. Depeche Mode have long had a strong fan base in Los Angeles, famously recorded their 101 live album live album from their Rose Bowl performance at in uh, Los Angeles in the burb of Pasadena. I was there, 15 years old, but I was there. So it's no surprise that not only are there plenty of fans in the Dodger Stadium crowd, but one very passionate one playing the organ for the team. On this evening, Rule worked through a number of Depeche Mode selections with the video of him playing Never Let Me Down being shared via the Vintage Los Angeles Facebook page as well as Rule's own Twitter account. And I actually have the audio of Dieter Rule playing Never Let Me Down from that May 30th game against the Pittsburgh Pirates at Dodger Stadium.
I, cool, dude. I, uh... <laughs> so, I, uh... I pulled that audio. I only listened to a few seconds of it. And, uh... As I do often on the show, I treat the I treat the podcast that I do like I do my full time radio show, uh, and I just do them as they're live. I don't do any, I don't do any editing, and um, often I'll go and grab these articles and I won't read them ahead of time. Um, I don't do that on my regular radio show. I usually go through and do notes, but I like doing it when I do the podcast, especially when it comes to doing this particular podcast because I, I just I like to get that instinctive reaction when I'm reading through some of these and um, some of these articles that I cover on the show. That being said, I hadn't listened to that in its entirety until just now when I played it. And I'm not going to lie, man. I got goosebumps. And uh, I got a little teary-eyed there. That was, um, that was really cool. Makes me wish that I was, uh, makes me wish that I was there. Um, and, and, man, <laughs> now I'm all messed up. I, you know, it, it's just this band, and I know it has for you, too. Uh, you wouldn't be listening to the show if it didn't. But this band has just meant so much to me um, throughout the years, uh, throughout my entire life, for crying out loud. And, uh, you know, again, I guess it kind of brings it just it, it 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 brought that pain from his from Andrew Fletcher's passing, um, you know, last week, kind of right back to the uh, to the forefront there. So, um, yeah, well, I'm glad I I'm glad I saved it. Sorry to get all blubbery uh, on you. But uh yeah, that was pretty. Uh, that was pretty amazing. Uh, this band is amazing. It's funny for me because one of the songs that means the most to me is one of the songs the band hates the most, and that is it's called "The Heart." Um, I've always kind of dug that song. I know that Martin is not a fan of "It's Called a Heart," and I've always kind of dug it. Um, you know, and and just for obvious for obvious reasons. So it just makes me laugh. So all right, let me move on. Uh, Dieter Rule didn't stop there. As a fan noted that his selections for the night also included Strange Love, Master and Servant, Behind the Wheel, and Walking in My Shoes. Uh, Rule started with the Dodgers in 2013 as a fill-in before taking over as the primary organist in 2016. What a great gig, by the way. He also served as the Los Angeles Kings organist over two stints, starting in 1989 before taking a break in 92, then resuming as their organist in 1998. You know what? I read those dates off, and I just immediately just have Depeche Mode, you know, history pops into my head. Uh, he also played an organ for the uh, for the Lakers, the San Jose Sharks, the Phoenix Coyotes, and played at uh, five different Olympic Games ceremonies. Uh, and yes, he's a big-time Depeche Mode fan. And and is it the same way for you? I get I get so tickled, right? I get I get so giddy when you find out that somebody is a is a, is a Depeche Mode fan that you didn't expect was going to be a Depeche Mode fan. I just I I love that, right? Uh he posed for a photo after being introduced to Martin Gore back in 2017. That same year he also shared a video of himself performing Enjoy the Silence. Um again, at the end of the piece, it goes on to cap off this uh, article talking about this particular interesting tribute, saying Fletcher died on May 26 at age 60. He appeared on 14 Depeche Mode studio albums, starting with 1981 Speak and Spell, and most recently working on 2017 Spirit album. The band was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in uh, 2020. So, uh, and again, there's been a lot more in terms of the tributes um, that have been uh, that have been pouring in. I've uh, seen a lot of posts online, uh, a lot of videos up on YouTube. Just been uh, been really uh, been really cool uh, cool to see, and uh, I look forward to hearing what eventually Martin and Dave um, have to say um, specifically, and what the future of the band uh, will bring. All right, that brings us to the uh, listener feedback portion of the show. <laughs> First comes from uh, Lennox T. Anderson, who just writes in to share uh, their order of uh, of songs. This is based off of the article that I did from Louder Sounder a couple of podcasts ago, ranking from worst to best the article did, as I speak like Yoda all of a sudden. Uh, and again, if you didn't listen to that show, I really liked that list. I just loved how objective and positive the list was, sort of still pointing out you know the what's good about the albums while still putting them in an order. Um, I have not done this yet, and maybe I need to do it for a um, for another podcast, much in the same way. Uh, I've got it. I've got it on a list 
of sort of podcast topics that I can eventually go and do. But Lennox uh, goes, uh, Lennox list goes like this. Number 14, Exciter. 13, Delta Machine. 12, Sounds of the Universe. 11, Some Great Reward. And then 10 through 7, Lennox, you cheated. But 10, 10 through 7, they has them all tied. So uh, Speak and Spell, Playing the Angel, Spirit, um, and Ultra. And then at 6, Songs of Faith and Devotion. 5, Construction Time again. 4, A Broken Frame. Uh, 3, Black Celebration. 2, Violator. And number 1, uh, Music for the uh, for the Masses. So Lennox, thank you for sharing your list. I still say you cheated by having 10 through 7 tied. But that's okay. There were no rules. So how could you cheat? Uh, next comes from a uh, friend of the show as well, John Justice. That's John J-O-H-N Justice, who I've mentioned many times on the show, who writes, funny how we have almost the same name, both huge DM fans since 85, grew up on different sides of the U.S. but seemed to be so similar, glad when I discovered you on Twitter and have been in touch ever since. Yeah, man, uh, me too. And as I mentioned on last week's show, it was really cool. Uh, to uh, receive the phone call that I did from uh, from John last week in the wake of hearing the news about uh, Fletch. Lastly, uh, senior staff writer at Slug Magazine, Paige Z, writes, Hi, John. I am a music journalist in Salt Lake City and lifelong Depeche Mode devotee. Feeling so sad about Fletch, the perennial charming nerd of the band. Just want to say that I agree. This is probably not the end, doing that thing with my fingers, of the band. We've worried that several times, and they've always resurfaced from the proverbial ashes. Salt Lake fans are aching along with everyone uh, lately. Much love to all the community. Yeah, and I agree. And um, and Paige, you made a really good point there of the band resurfacing from the proverbial ashes. And I, I hadn't really made that connection yet, but you're absolutely right. And I think even on a subconscious level, I kind of felt that way. When you go back and you look at what people back then in the early 80s thought was the end of the band with the departing of Vince Clark, then you look at what happened with Alan leaving, with Dave's overdose, and now, of course, with the passing of Fletch, uh, I think that they will keep up with this trend. Uh, I would speculate that it may be the band's last album, but you also just never know. You never know. I mean, it, 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 it remains to be seen. Uh, I expect that within the, ne- within the next few months, we will get some word uh, from uh, Martin and Dave on, on, on Fletch's passing and the future of the, uh, of the band. All right. Um, keeping it short uh, this week. Thank you so much for uh, checking the show out. Before you go, um, I just want to mention, again, I am an author. And if you'd like to support my nerd world, uh, you can do that by purchasing uh, my science fiction series. If you love Depeche Mode and you read sci-fi, you can treat yourself, a friend or a family member, with sci-fi uh, written for adults, but great for ages 11 plus. Um, Embark Book 1 is available in ebook for just $0.99. Cents. Uh, the rest of the series is priced at two ninety nine, and you can actually get the first three books in the seven-book series as a box set for uh, $3.99. Uh, $2.99 for the other books, and then $3.99 for the box set of the first three books, which uh, completes a com- uh, an arc, a trilogy, as the story continues in book four, uh, five, six, and seven. Uh, and again, um, it's set in the future where air and space flight culture has replaced car culture, inspired in part by Depeche Mode, life in the so-called space age, the world we live in and life in general. Depeche Mode plays a large part in the underlying themes of the story, and the main character himself, modeled uh, not surprisingly after yours truly, uh, is a massive Depeche Mode uh, fan at the time when music of the 1980s through the 2000s is nostalgic and popular among the characters in the story. The stories feature references to our favorite band, both direct and indirect, while telling an exciting uh, science fiction space opera saga. Uh, saga. Excuse me. What is a soggle? need to work on that. I like that word. Uh, Space opera saga. Uh, Book one description goes as follows. As Earth faces its end, the fight to rule the stars begins. Taft Guardia picked the right day to upgrade his ship when fellow pilot Kate Amaro arrived needing help 
investigating a cryptic message left behind by her late aerospace engineer father, unaware that an industrial accident inside Earth's largest supplier of civilian and military spacecraft has set off an apocalyptic chain of events. They make a shocking discovery. As war erupts during the global evacuation, Earth's evacuees stand upon the brink of annihilation. Realizing the significance of what they found, with the help of a ragtag squadron of pilots, Taft and Katha, might be humanity's greatest hope for survival among the stars. Don't miss this 2021 Tail Flick Discovery Sci-Fi Award-winning series. If you like your science fiction space opera epic filled with romance and Depeche Mode and action, that Embark is is uh, perfect for you. It's available on Amazon uh, dot com in uh, ebook, hardcover, paperback, and uh, audiobook. Also at mynerdworld uh, dot net. So moving forward, um, potentially a show next week. Uh, if not, I'll be taking a bit of a break as I go through um, this uh, operation on June fifteenth. And a couple of weeks of uh, recovery, the show will return. But I do intend to have another show uh, posted uh, sometime around uh, probably June 9th or uh, 10th. In the meantime, thank you so much uh, for uh, checking out the show this week. I really do appreciate it. Love to hear from you. Talkshownerd at gmail.com. Or if you are uh, listening to this up on YouTube, you can check it out uh, there as well and leave a uh, message on YouTube, and I'll share it uh, with uh, everybody else on the show next week. Again, thank you so much for checking the show out. I do appreciate it, and talk to you again real soon. My Nerd World.